We're delighted to welcome a unique, diverse group of content creators out on the front lines of filmmaking and television. Their storytelling spotlighting important LGBTQ plus themes on some of today's most watched networks and streaming services. These are directors, screenwriters, actors, and producers who are bringing to life key stories and issues well beyond our imagination from even a decade ago. Our first guest has earned so many titles. New York Times bestselling author, former People magazine editor, and now an acclaimed screenwriter, director, and producer on popular TV shows such as the powerhouse Pose on FX. Here she is on the cover of Hollywood Reporter, its first ever Pride issue. And now to our fascinating conversation with the one and only Janet Mock. I want to talk about content creation and your formidable role in all of that, but let's start with the news of the day. We have a Supreme Court decision um, that represents literally decades of work on behalf of LGBTQ activists. First, what was your reaction to the ruling? Oh, my reaction was overwhelming joy. You know, in the past few weeks, there haven't been many victories. And so it was so great to wake up and to see that our Supreme Court really backed the people. Um, you know, we had trans lawyers in the courtroom. We had trans folk and LGBTQ people and allies on the streets demanding this kind of equality and justice. You know, for me, I spent many years early in my career not being out as a trans woman for fear of being fired by my employers. And gratefully, when I did, you know, come forward and told my story when I was working at People Magazine, they, I wasn't fired. But for many people, that does happen and that has happened. And I'm so glad that the court saw that and understood that gender identity gender expression and sexual orientation are things that are become, be covered as terms of sex discrimination. We just needed that victory, especially this week. This is a moment in our history when we are uh, re-examining history. Um, and one of the points of pioneering LGBTQ work was um, after the Stonewall riots. And I think maybe the mainstream America doesn't understand the important role that trans women played uh, in the Stonewall riots. Talk to me about activists like uh, Marsha P. Johnson and Sylvia Rivera and why sometimes trans women of color are left out of the history books. I think that it's, you know, the history books for a lot of marginalized people have been written not by them. Right, and so the true events of Stonewall, 1969, um, you know, really have to center um, LGBTQ people of color, trans women of color, and gender nonconforming people who really were fighting for their rights and for their lives. Um, they put their bodies on the line that night to say that they didn't know, didn't want to be surveillance anymore. They didn't want to be police. They didn't want to be told that they had to wear a certain number of article of gender appropriate appropriate clothing in order to enter into spaces or to even be on the streets. And so that was the lived reality for a lot of gender nonconforming, for a lot of trans people. I think that what's so great now is that, you know, young people now know that the reason why we celebrate Pride is because of the 1969 Stonewall uprisings and that those uprisings were fought hard and long by trans and gender nonconforming people, and specifically hearing people speak the names of Marsha P. Johnson and Sylvia Rivera is just so uplifting because, you know, we do exist in a movement that for a long time um, didn't really address the particular needs of black and brown trans women and trans women of color. Talk to me broadly about um, the uprising that you're seeing now in this country, um, the, the Black Lives Matter movement, but also the Say Her Name movement as part of that, because not only is Breonna Taylor part of that Say Her Name uh, inclusion in uh, police brutality, but also Black trans women. Well, you know, Juju, I think I'll start with just, you know, my own experience. You know, growing up in the world, the first thing that I knew about myself was that I was a Black child who was poor in America. And that alone has its own set of difficulties and obstacles and things that will enable me to survive and be happy and thrive in the world. On top of that, in my adolescence, I realized and learned that I am trans. Um, and so to be a black person, a woman, and also a trans person all in one body comes with its own unique challenges, but also unique gifts. 
And so I think that when we're talking about an intersectional movement that really is addressing all the parts of ourselves, we can't say that we're rallying against, you know, violence against women or domestic violence or feminism or LGBTQ rights or, you know, racial justice and um, equality without realizing that some of us fall in between the cracks of all of those different movements and that all those movements address our lives. And so something like Say Her Name, being loud and proud of centering Black women and to say that Black trans women are included in Black womanhood, I think is so, so important. You know, just this last week, we had two young women, Rhea Milton of Cincinnati and Dominique Fells, of uh, Philadelphia, both found murdered. Um, and it was such a, um, it's so tough because, you know, we deal with these bodies over and over and over being found, over and over and over, not much justice being served, over and over and over, not really hearing our sisters, our Black trans sisters' names. In this moment of reckoning uh, in this country, how can white people, how can cisgendered people be allies and learn to help move forward positively? Allyship is such an integral part of any social justice movement. You know, we need people beyond ourselves to donate their time, their energy, their resources and connections to helping us move things forward. I like to say partners or co-conspirators to say that we're in this together. Um, and I think that the one thing that allies can do is really to see it not so much as a noun, like as a label that you get to say as a little sticker for yourself, but to actually see it as a process of continual action. You know, that action can look like reading books by and for trans people or and or black people. That means using that education that you've gotten from that book to challenge kitchen table conversations in your own home, in your community, with your neighbors. I think allies is an integral part. It allows, you know, folk on the ground who are fighting for their own lives to know that they're not out there alone. And I think that that's what's been so inspiring about this particular, you know, series of demonstrations from Black Lives Matter to Black Trans Lives Matter, um, seeing all these demonstrations, seeing the different kinds of people that are out there and showing up, not just in the streets, but also in the boardrooms, on their social media, you know, really educating their audiences. And so I think that right now, you know, partnership is truly what we need. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.